Hey guys, Jesse here, and tonight I'll be taking a look at the HG Astroth from the Iron Blooded Orphans side story manga that I think is yet to be released, or maybe has been re released, um, not in English at least. And it seems to be piloted by what looks like a very grumpy Gintoki from Gintama. So, without a way, let's go ahead and look at this guy. Um, there was a lot of hype behind this guy uh, when it was first revealed because the design was so unique. But um, now that it's come out, it seems like um, not a lot of people have gotten their hands on it because there were some weird, um, I guess, back orders and stuff from U.S. stores. But in any case, here it is. And just to talk about the suit itself... Um, the design is very unique. It's it's a far more intimidating looking design and more bulky than say the Barbatos or, or even the Gujon like Rebig. But overall, I mean obviously it's a symmetrical design. Uh it is still very attractive and and um kind of comes together uh, not in all aspects, but for a majority of the the suit, I feel like the design is, is really nice. Uh, the proportions are also pretty good. I do feel like uh, uh, the shoulders are a little larger than what the line art suggests, and the head is a little too bit too small, as you can see from here. Uh, and that white shoulder is is really small on the line art, but on the model itself is quite huge, and the legs seem to be really big on the model compared to line art. Either way, uh, it still looks really good. So I, I do like the proportions of this of this guy. Uh, in terms of what I've done, uh, as you can see, uh, for the most part, ish, it's a straight build. Uh, no custom paint or anything, except for a bunch of hand-painted details that I've done, because this guy is rather sticker-heavy for an IBO kit. Uh, for an HG, it's not bad at all, but it is missing a lot of color apps that they do not give you stickers for. And there are some large sticker or color apps that they do give you stickers for that I feel really could have been parts. And there's other uh, like seam lines and stuff that they really could have avoided. But anyways, let's actually just give them a close and start talking about it. So for the head, that red in the uh, V-fin is a sticker, but I have painted it. Um, it's... Normal articulation, I'm not going to go through your articulation too much. Uh, obviously, I've painted the the sort of uh, bronze in there. I've used the stickers here for the green because I liked how reflective they were. Uh, aside from that, or I also used the eye stickers. Aside from that, there's no real uh, color apps missing here. Um, there's a lot of like standard high-grade stuff that the IBO line has been pretty good about, but... Not here, there's like a lot of hollow parts. This backpack in particular is just like one big piece and it's hollow. And there's some, uh, from some angles you can see into the backpack from the front. Um, this uh, shoulder has a seam line that runs across it. We're kind of back to the old uh, shoulders are two pieces that are sandwiched together, which I, the IBO kits have been really good about not doing, especially on the uh, Barbatos. They were just one big piece that slid on. That was really nice, but not so here. For the arms, uh, I have painted that red in there for the cables. Um, this is also two pieces that sandwich together, and there's a seam line that runs down the wrists and on the back as well. I fixed it, but there's usually a seam line there. Uh, that's pretty bad. Here on this arm, let me take off the sub knuckle. There's also this is also two pieces that came together, and there's a seam line that runs across this entire thing. You kind of see where I messed up there, but I kind of feel like that could have been avoided by making it, or it could have made seam line fixing easier if they sandwiched them this way instead of this way. Yeah, I'm not sure why they didn't do that. Um, these. Side skirts, I have a lot of problems with. For one, all this blue that you see on it are supposed to be there, but they're not in sticker form or on parts form. That's all painted. 
Uh, that really could have been a piece, like a small blue piece that went over this because this is just two pieces sandwiched together with this thruster flap and the part that allows it to hinge here. Yeah, I really feel like these, at least these two blue pieces could have been parts. Uh, that's a sticker um, that I've decided to use. And yeah, so because this is two pieces sandwiched together, you have a huge steam line that runs all the way across this entire thing. And that one is quite difficult to fix. So uh, another problem I have with these side skirts is, so Todd on Gunpla TV mentioned this, and I didn't really understand what he was talking about, but now that I have it in my hand, he was complaining about the articulation of these skirts. I didn't know what he was really getting at until I got it in my hand. So it hinges like this and hinges back and forth, but it does not swivel this way, which makes it really hard to get a more dynamic pose with the leg because if you have a leg like this, you can't swivel it to line up with this leg. Uh, and that can be kind of a problem, at least in the looks department. Uh, it gets out of the way just fine, but it just looks weird to have them pointed straight forward, like dead center all the time. Uh, legs, obviously asymmetrical. Uh, that gray is a sticker. I've painted it. Uh, these two gray accents on the front and on the side here. Uh, they do not give you stickers for and those need to be gray. This right here, this gray, this all this gray here used to be white. I've painted it. They do give you a sticker for that, but that really could have been a piece. That really could have been a piece that goes on top of this white sort of like shell. Um, I'm glad this is a piece, this black knee. Uh, I was really scared that would be a giant sticker, but that one is a huge sticker. That one really should be a piece. Um, for the feet, very plain, I feel. Just big blue block. <laughs> Almost no detail. But that's just the design of the Astrod. Not really the Bandai's fault. Uh, you have a black sticker that goes down the front here. I've painted that. And gray here. Again, I really feel like that gray could have been a piece. But for whatever reason, they give you a sticker for that. The black is excusable, that's a flat surface, it's it's fine, but I've also painted that. Anyways, yeah, so there's that. Uh, here's underneath, no hollow parts, which is really nice. So yeah, all in all, um, it's okay. Uh, oh, and on the back here, the these red thrusters don't move or anything. They look like they should, but they don't. So all in all, it's, it's sort of like in between the IBO HG standards and regular HG standards, but um, you know, this is sort of like we have the IBO kits that are really really good about part separation and not having you not needing you to paint so much. Where we have HGs from a while back, where it's like there's seam lines and painting needed almost everywhere. This sits somewhere in between, and um, I mean for me it's it's okay, but I know a lot of people might be disappointed. Uh, with the lack of color separation and how many stickers are used to cover such large places just like that side area. Luckily, all that detail is molded in there, so there's uh, you're not losing anything by not using the sticker. So let's go through the accessories. So let's start about, or let's start with the sub-knuckle. It's sort of like a shield with a hand, but this hand can't really hold anything. It just articulates. Uh, with these fingers here, just like that, and this ball joint on that thumb. As you can see, there's a ball joint there, as, or there's a slot for a ball joint there, so you can have this on either side or have another Astroth and make it symmetrical. Um, but this is really nice. It plugs onto the hand or into the arm like that, and this can be moved between two different positions to sort of uh, show more of the hand and show less of the hand. Uh, I really like this accessory. I think it's a really cool addition and it definitely completes the look of the Astroth. Um, as for weapons, we have this uh, machine gun. And I find it kind of ironic that the suit is so unique and so full of detail and it's asymmetrical and it's such a an eye catcher. And it has like this really bland rifle. Uh, it's just bleh. Like, uh, it's not ugly. It's not like bad looking. It's just very, very plain. 
but he, he can hold on to it just fine. Uh, it's sort of a cross between the Gujon uh, gun and like maybe the Manrodi uh, machine gun, but there's that. He gets this dinky ass little knife. Um, yeah, it's not even remotely sharp at the end. Uh, this is just one piece. I don't know, I find it funny because it's so small. But we all know that that's not a knife. That's a knife. So, this is sort of the piece de resistance. Uh, the demolition knife. I've painted this in a metallic uh, gunmetal and painted that uh, silver. But, yeah, this thing is enormous. It's much larger than the Astaroth. And uh, it has a lot of moving parts, so you have this moving secondary handle. It can collapse like this. This actually has a little tab that holds into place, and this handle can come down so for easy storage. But he looks really cool holding this. Uh, you'll see shots at the end with this. But he can only really hold it in like maybe two poses. Uh, it's hard to work around this thing because it is quite heavy and there is a seam line that goes between it's it's four parts here so these two come together these two come together with some connecting parts but you'll need to fix a seam on there but in any case um it's just hard to pose him with he only really i could only really get him into two really good looking poses with this thing because he has to have two hands on it otherwise it needs to drag across the ground so that kind of sucks but those two poses do look really good so and this is a really cool weapon so there might be a way you can modify it so he can hold it with one hand or finagle it in a balanced position that he can have it up in one arm or with one hand but for the most part he's gonna have to have two hands on it and that's about it for everything that comes with the astroth and what it is um oh one more thing he does come with this little connector to put on the backpack so, uh, that kind of wraps up my review of the Astroth. Uh, it's a really good kit. I, I was really looking forward to it, and I think after you've painted it or given it some attention and painted some of the color details that uh, they were providing stickers for instead, uh, you'll, you'll have yourself a really good looking mobile suit. Uh, the design's just unique. It's one of the most unique designs that come out for gun for a Gundam in a while. And I think it does have a lot more shelf presence than the other IVO kits. Not only from its design, but from its sort of size and bulk. It's quite a bulky yet sleek looking mobile suit. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Come